right, so I've got squeaky chairs here too, by the way, if anybody's wondering. So, I, just, I didn't need to do that probably, but I just have it. Before I start, I usually do that. Just to make sure I don't have fingerprints or things lurking on the canvas that I don't want. Alright, so just wipe that little bit out of on my brush uh, on the paper towel here, and we'll start. Well, we'll start with a little bit of Indian yellow. Indian yellow. A little bit of Indian yellow, pull it a little bit down. exactly a circle but a little bit on here and make it as bright as you want or as subdued as you want maybe you like more pastel -y to the state of the pastel side I want to brighten this thing up make it a firecracker and there that's probably enough for the Indian yellow just throw it around through there something like that okay and then let's go next door we should have some yellow ochre out also. Yellow ochre is a little, the Indian yellow is a little brighter, the yellow ochre is a little more gold color. And a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and on the outskirts of the, the outskirts of town here, the Indian yellow, we'll put a little bit of this yellow ochre. You could probably get away with it looking nice without using both of those yellows. But if you see a little bit different uh, difference there, it's nice. So we do want to blend so there's no harsh line between the two. Kind of let them blend together a little bit there. Get rid of any uh, definite uh, hard lines. And we'll just take that. Probably just take a little bit of this color and throw it up in here. Even so what we're going to do next. Put some crimson on top of this thing here. Make sure we're, again, kill those harsh lines. Any harsh lines. Yeah. You put as much as that on there as you want. Like I said, you get away with one of them. You don't really need them both. Hey, Cindy and Kathy from Dallas, Texas. Howdy. All right. So, uh, let's just stack the same brush, same brush here, and let's go next door to Laser and Crimson. Just a little bit of paint. I'm not using a ton of paint. And the good thing about Laser and Crimson and um, this uh, yellow ochre especially is that it makes a nice, it makes a beautiful peachy color. And if you've watched this episode, you know Bob talks about that. It's a pretty, pretty sky. I just kind of want to put enough up in here. See that little bright red? Start to mix them with it. And you can make it as bright as you want. But it starts mixing with that yellow and it will turn peachy. That's the best uh, color uh, that I can call it peachy. Best description. There you go. Trying to yellow, I'm trying to say. A little bit over in there. Bring this camera around just back a little bit more for you guys. One second there. There we go. Hey, it made as bright as you want. And this one, uh, this will look different than the other one I painted. So maybe I'll be a little bit brighter. Red, crimson up here. Take a little bit over here and go ahead and finish this side of the canvas too. Maybe right in the middle, maybe I'll just put a little bit even. Could be clouds or something. I don't know. Sometimes I never knew. Well, actually, a lot of times I never knew why Bob was doing something. And then at the end, you're like, oh, well, that's pretty. I don't know if these are meant to be clouds or just color in the sky, but it works. You, any of it works. So don't let it worry you really about where we're going with it. The journey's fun. It doesn't matter where you're going, as long as you have fun on the trip. Got cold here again. We had to cover up plants and things. And then we gotta get our little lemon trees gotta come in now again. It's just it's a hassle. All right, and we can throw a little bit down in case we see it later. I'm a little bit below halfway with this color. A little bit below halfway. 
Something like that will work. Hey Mickey, I didn't see you there. Hey Judy. Alright, get the paint off of me. What do you think? Is that okay? I'm looking about right. I'm looking about right. I see you're looking at it long enough. I'll just keep playing with it. Now. Yeah, just make sure you don't have those harsh, harsh lines. Let this be kind of a a loose free sky and go over so take that breath over it all out there okay easiest little thing bob's ever painted i believe this guy is easy because you really can't mess it up if you turn it all crimson it's pretty if you turn it and leave it yellow it's pretty if you turn it all peach it's pretty so really you can't you can't get green using these colors so it's going to be pretty no matter what you do to that sky All right. Now the next thing we gotta do is take them. I'm gonna use. I don't usually use these. Then I broke them out. Now I always use these. You guys see me use this one a lot. This is the half round. So the Bob Ross half round. These brushes are quite old. They're four years old. I guess that's not old compared to some people having brushes from 30 years ago. But I broke them in pretty good. And then I also have. The big guys. This is the uh, one inch foliage brush is what this one's called. So I think I'm gonna try this one to start out with. I never use it because it's quite a bit bigger than the half round. Um, you can see. See the difference there on those two brushes. But if you're using a bigger canvas, I think this one will cover a little bit better for us than the little one. And you can also just use the two inch brush. So that's what Bob did. But I like these little round ones. Uh, Velcro patches for your brushes and fingers keeps them in your hand. Hey, it's good to toss them around every now and then have some fun with them. Never know. It's just good practice. So I'm going to take a weird combination here, guys. And I can't really show you the palette over here, but I'll show you what it looks like on my brush. I'm going to take some black. And that's midnight black and a little bit of bright red. A little bit of bright red. And I'm not using a ton of paint. I'm using a very little paint. And I'm looking here just to make sure. You want this to be kind of dark. Um, and then the easiest thing in the world is these little trees like this. So we'll just start. Make sure I got enough paint on here. So I'm using hardly any paint right now. That's going to be annoying listening to that. But I hope you see that. That's all we're going to do for these background trees. We're just going to kind of smash it into the canvas and let it be. That's all these are. There, I need just a touch more paint. Remember, you gotta have paint to paint. So, there we go. Think about little trees back here. There's, a, there's one. That's just the top of it. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom of it. We're gonna have other rows that go in front of that. Oh, and then we'll have one that lives next to more. And again, very little paint. Very little paint. And have little arms and things. And it's going to look really odd until we put some little sticks and things in here. But it's like they're way off in the distance. So far off in the distance, you really don't see any detail at all right now. No detail at all right now. And, and again, you can just... Put as many of these, I'll probably take it on up over here and put a little ghostly one right here. Sorry for the, sounds like a drum. Add a little bit to that one. Well, there's one level of them, but before I forget, Bob put a little ghostly one up here with hardly anything. Hardly anything. 
just something. Something back here. Yeah. There we go. That's now it's time for a tea drink. Or drink a tea. And we'll go for about three levels of these little guys. Alright, so if that one's further back, this will be a wider, of course. Let's go there a little bit there on top. And you can touch them back a little bit if you want them to be a little bit darker. Um, if, that, if these are further back, we have to have another level that comes in front of these, right? So just add a little bit more paint to your brush next time. And I'll do the same color next year. It's bright red and then not black. And I may start, eventually start sneaking in some crimson here and just some little things like that. We'll, let's put one right here. It goes a bit brighter. Bob talked about it being trees up here and then he started calling them bushes when he got down here. So maybe these are big bushes or something. There's one. It's a little closer to us. It's a little brighter. A little bit brighter. And just so you can see the difference, I grab one of my um, two inch brushes here. We'll do one with the two inch brush here. Except you can't really mess these up. All you would do is take that brush, kind of tip it up, and just kind of scoop it with the corner. I figured the, these big uh, round brushes cover a little more ground than that, and that's why I was using them. Add a little more paint. A little more paint, and we want shoot. We want a bigger one right there, Ben. Kind of come in front of that one right there. And the shapes aren't as important as just leaving some of that yellow showing through, and you know, leaving the depth and distance that you can see there, like right in there and right through there, and some of it even through, showing through those trees. I do think that one might need a there. Not quite as almost too ghostly right there. Yeah, that'll help that one. What if we sneak into some crimson now? Is that okay with everybody? Hey, Judy from Oklahoma. And Shirley from Wyoming. Let's sneak into a little bit of crimson now. Crimson, I added a little bit of the same color back to the brush. I wanna... Oh. Look at that one. Oh my. There's a firecracker. That's kind of an odd shape. Do a little better with your shape than I did, but pay attention apparently. Mess it up a little bit. I'll cover some of that up. But it really shows in front of that. And again, it's trying to get that um, depth and distance in the painting. It's so important. So we'll put a crimson in. I might skip back to some black and red, bright red. You can use any of the colors. It doesn't have to be these. Just these. Use what you want. Use what you like. Yeah, I like that one just kind of coming from that one a little bit there. There we go. Raise this guy up a little bit. These are big bushes down here to me. They don't look like trees. But they'll look like something. That's what we need. Hey Sherry from Virginia. Yes, yes. Terry's here and she she she's uh she's the pot stirrer here. Especially if Dane is not here. Terry has to take up the slack. Oh, what do we want? Maybe, maybe, maybe over here. Where I've got that big um bright red one there let's just shoot that's just straight black pretty well you know it's a dirty brush so knock that guy back a little bit there and again we're adding all those little uh, depth and distance back here as we go down the canvas and then it's probably the easiest painting you could if you started out with one this would be one of the easier ones to start out with Bob it's called Snowfall Magic, if you ever just want to look it up and try to do it exactly like Bob. Might be, might be a little different. They all will. Uh, how far? We'll keep coming here. 
Ooh, do here. Maybe, maybe right now up just a little bit. Bring him in front. There we go. Something like that. Again, I'm a little bit below halfway. I don't think I need another crimson one somewhere, don't I? Maybe right there. Need something over here, maybe. Maybe that crimson that oh, that doesn't look good. Let's put some black there. There we go. Color down here, and maybe one more over here in the corner. Darken this up. Let's add all three colors: the crimson, the black, and the red together. And I'll put one over here. Make some with the purple. And just kind of our angle them down towards. This is going to be water and snow down here. Don't see that at all. And then more crimson. Put this bright crimson one right here. Big old bright down. Yeah. Big old bright bush right here. There we go. Something like that. Well, that's probably good. Probably good. Probably too many, but that's okay. Season 19, episode 1. Thanks, Scott. Let's go to our script liner brush next. Let's see if you might have any questions or anything. Well, a warm, yeah, this is definitely a warm winter scene. Kind of an odd one, but I've seen, you know, it be kind of sunshine and snow coming through the, uh, you know, the background here and scenes before. Uh, so it's, it, it is an odd one, though. You don't see it like this all the time. Let's see, maybe uh, a little bit of that black and red together for some trees, tree branches and tree limbs and things. Think it'll touch it thinner. And whew, that may be too dark. Especially for these back here. You may want to lighten it up a bit. I'll just kind of see what I think about it. You can always put a little bit of white in it too. And here in a minute, if we don't like it, we'll just touch back over these. And I'm just throwing on some sticks and twigs here. And they can just pop out of nowhere even. And this will really help bring some feeling of a forest instead of maybe, uh, it's almost right now to me, these always look like puffy clouds. Believe it or not, I think this is probably one of the most favorite ones that I ever taught in a class. I had to teach this thing three times. Uh, twice, uh, four times. Twice at two different stores. Because uh, so many people wanted to take it. Um, so it's been a very popular painting. Put one right here. And however many sticks and twigs you think you need is how many you need. And again, they let them come out of wherever. Let, it, let them come out of the forest. They don't even have to have foliage on them. Like that one. But it's back there. We know it's something there. Uh, maybe there's one right there. And as I run out of paint on this one, I'm going to sneak up in this ghostly one here. Right here. And maybe just paint. You might see most of it down at the, the bottom of the tree and just kind of disappears into the mist. Into the ether you go, tree limbs. Something like that. Maybe over here. Yeah, I haven't added any more paint to the brush, but I've got enough on there. And it might trick my mind that say that there's a little bit of something back there. Yeah, we need some more though. One reason I like more is because I like them tree limbs. Those script liners are never anybody's probably uh, right next to the knife as far as favorability to use. But once you learn to use one, you can do some really neat stuff with them. Don't be watching me while driving. <laughs> you get a ticket or something. I'll be here when you get home. Just throw something in here. Wherever you think they need them. Wherever you want them. Let them be. Maybe, oh, they, don't all, they don't all have to be straight either. 
can just be, and they can just be some sticks. Shoot, that they don't matter. Just big old things back there just happening. Now, what you can do is sometimes they look a little odd to me, like that one. You go back. It doesn't make any crimson on it. Yeah, just kind of go over it there and knock it down a little bit. Knock it into the bush if you needed to. You don't need to do that with every one of them. But if you did, that's how you do it. You don't worry about it. You don't let it let it uh, worry you too much. Put a few little guys over here. Maybe there's a crooked one right there. Living somewhere. There. That's probably enough. Warm little sky, easy little bushes or clouds. That's another way to do clouds, just tap them on there just like that. Blend them out a little better. There you go. There you go. And while I'm thinking of it, probably grab me just a touch of that dark. I'm going to show you one more with it. I'll see how little paint's on there. It's just a, a, a like barely any. But I do want to make just a little bit, pull a little bit here, and this will help you lay your snow out too. For shadows in the snow here. Like our snow kind of comes down like this. Right at the base of those bushes there. I'm just pulling a little bit of this dark in. I know it's going to be weird. You have red snow. There. There we go. That works. Just a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see that. I hope you can. Let's we'll see it on the picture if I take it, I guess. Well, I guess it'll be snow then. But it helps you kind of lay out your snow. So that's the next thing we put in. Some snow. I think I'm looking back here to make sure I'm not missing a step. So I'm going to go to the clean brush now. Clean brush, I'm going to use... Um, <laughs> squeaky chair. A clean brush and we use titanium white. And I'm gonna load up a good bit. I'll show you what I mean by that. Pull it on there. Load up a good bit. That might not even be enough. Let's go a little more. Look at that. I got a lot of paint on there. And I want to start thinking about where does my snow live over here? Pull over to the side. Just like that. Load back up. I didn't get enough. Just pull it to the side. Right under that bush. Maybe hard for y'all to see this on the screen. I'm just pulling. Pulling over to the side. We're thinking there's going to be water in this one. So the water is right here somewhere. Probably should have already put the color in, but that's the way I paint usually. There, you may be able to see a little bit of snow. Maybe not. Pull it over. Pull it over, pull it over, pull it over. It kind of comes down here somewhere. But you don't need a ton because we're using a white canvas. That's why I didn't put a lot of that dark color there. But I put enough for it to look like something. Again, it would be hard, I think, on the camera for y'all to see those. Yeah, it's going to be hard for y'all to see it, but it's there. Just don't, and it can be a little darker. You can put a little more dark if you need it. But we do need some, we'll go ahead and put our water in too. This is the advantage I have, and I, I always forget, thank all with you guys, that you probably don't have 10 different brushes. I've got a brush here that's got some of that color on. Some of our sky color, you may have to clean one if you're not mad. It'll bounce in and get a little more. And under here, we need some water. Right under our snow. And then we'll clean our snow up again, too. Yellow water. Now, Bob put some darker colors in his. I thought it looked better like this, but you can also throw a little crimson and mix up that peach color. Darken it up now if you want. I might do that myself. Put on those edges there. Get some 
crimson, and, and the yellow ochre. Over here, bright cherry water. And I'll have to clean our snow bank up. It'll also help you see that that's snow now. Pulling straight down. Now brighten it up a little more so you guys can see it. Oh, right here could use. Oh, oh, don't do that much. Shoot, that's too much. Don't tell them I did that. That's not too bad. Pulling it down, pulling it down. Put a little bit of that in there and then we'll look at it. This is where Bob took a little phthalo blue and threw it in the water. And I'm like, Bob, I'm not going to have people throw phthalo blue and yellow together in the water. So I left it out. But if you wanted to, you could sneak back. If you're getting it that dark, you could sneak back and grab a little crimson here and there. A little bit of crimson. Right there, maybe. And then play with it. Make it your water. Raise the water up a little bit over here. The water kind of runs at an angle like this. Kind of running down towards this way. It gets a little little bit bigger down here, a little bigger bank, but it's running here. There's another bank that lives right here for a big stick tree at the end. Putting in some colors. You can bounce back and forth. Uh, Carefully if you put any black in the water. With the yellow, that can give you some problems. But we'll call that good enough. I'll say that's good enough. And go side to side. Or just go across it softly, like that. Hit it one more time now. There we go. There we go. Again, I can cheat. I can go back now. Grab my brush that I just used that I just had for white. And clean up some of this. Make it up. Let that bank kind of come over again there. And right here, maybe there's a bigger piece that our little birch tree lives on. Kind of sticks out a little more. Who knows? Who knows? It'd be a little different than the other one I painted. We don't care. But this one is today's painting. Yeah, something like that will work. Something like that will work. Mind you not. Nope, I've got one back here. There it is. Oh, I didn't clean it. Take, take better care of your knife. This is an old knife, but take better care of it than I do. Have you some titanium white? And probably titanium will work. You can get some liquid white if you need to. Yeah, I might need it. I'm going to saw in a little water line here. There we go. That's the bank of that snow. I want you to look. I'm not trying to keep with the um, how the land goes. I'm just letting the knife move down the canvas. The knife is staying horizontal to the canvas, though. Okay. That's important. If not, the water will look really odd. Just put you some little. Something there, there's something there. I want to brighten it up a couple spots back there. And just sawing right into that. Maybe in here somewhere there's a, a little bit of. I always do this, probably overdo it honestly. But if you want a little movement or something in the water right there, put a little bit there. Where do you think a little thicker right in there, even who knows? There we go. There we go. There it is. I, have, I got more than half the painting done in probably no time here. Of course not as fast as Bob, I've already done. Think about that. I started at 8. Bob would be done in 27 minutes. Had to be or less. So he would already have the whole painting done. 
That is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy to me. On this side of the canvas especially. I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. Pushes, brings this one forward and pushes that one back. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'll have to fix my water line though too. Somewhere in here, there's a birch tree. We go all the way to the top. We won't, yeah, well, we'll let this one go right here. And I'm just going to touch it on here real quick. Now, don't be afraid to use the fan brush or the filbert to put this on here. I'm just going to use the the knife. I think Bob in this episode actually showed you the knife and the uh, fan brush. Just using the fan brush to put the Put the tree on. Yeah, there. There's one. We'll beef it up a little bit. Go ahead. I don't want to get too big on me. I want it to be a little fatter than that, though. A little chunkier. But not too chunky. We don't want our trees to get too chunky on us. There. Sorry, Mark. Don't be in the way. Just a second there. Clean up this edge here on the back. We've got two of these guys. Bob had three. I just did two. Clean up the back edge. There. Better beef it up at top. Right? It looks like too thick. We don't want too thick. No too thick trees. This is going to be okay. My hand's not steady enough sometimes, guys. Sometimes it shakes. Yeah, I hit the canvas wrong. They do make something called a mall stick, or you can get a curtain rod, or I've seen people use back scratchers, and you can kind of set that up here, and then you can really rest your hand on that instead of hitting the canvas. So if you struggle, that might be a good thing to grab. Well, uh, I'll make this one a little, not quite as tall. Probably not quite as fat either. This is kind of going to go right next to him. This is his brother Sam. Right here. This is George. Sam and George. They live down, down by the river. There's no van involved though. We might let them grow together even like that. If somebody could paint me a van down by the river, it'd be a good one for this one. I do want Sam here to be a little beefed up there. Beef him up just a little bit. There. That's probably good. Yeah. That'd be that'd be fine for what we need. Curtain rod, yeah, I don't have one. I need to just get something. But again, my hand's shaky. There's the birch tree start. Clean off that knife. Get rid of the black on your knife, please. You might paint them on. See what I'm talking about? Let the paint dry on my knife. This is the old. This is the new old one. It's one that's kind of deformed, so you don't really care about it. We need to put some snow. These are birch trees. So. I say put the snow on because I always think of it like a mountain. Because you use no pressure and just a little bit of paint here. Uh, but it's the bark is what we're putting. So I've got a little roll of paint. I'll show you. Cut that little roll. If you can see it, you can get a dog hair in yours. That'd be nice. Just like I did. 
And we know the brightest spot's probably right there, so the tree won't have its highlight side be right here. So just put that up there to the canvas and just kind of pull. Just kind of pull. Just kind of pull. Something like that. I think my white's thicker than my black. By the way, I don't like doing birch trees. They're probably one of my favorite trees, but painting on this method can get a little messy. You don't want to keep going over them because uh, they'll just smear. They'll just smear on you. Try to get them on there and one little hit. And it's almost kind of doing like this. It's almost a. I can't explain it without doing it. You put it on there and then you kind of, whoop, you're trying to round that little, make a little curve there almost. A little bit up there at the top. And if you get a spot or two, you can't go back, but be careful here. See, it's getting a little smeary on me. No pressure though, please, no pressure, just like a mountain. There, that'll work for now. All right, give me a little more paint. And we'll do this one here. And this one probably... Something like that. I'll hopefully bring this one in front, actually. I always hold my breath when I do uh, birch trees. Make sure you're breathing. Or have somebody standing by, no CPR, or has some smelling salts available. There. Now we need to, sometimes Bob puts a shadow color, sometimes he doesn't. I'm going to put something back there because it doesn't look good to me. So I'll take a little bit of black and throw it in my white, but just a tiny bit, just enough for it would, it's a gray. I don't know if y'all can see that. A bit of a gray color here. I'm going to sit here and just look kind of, you can go outside of your shape there and just kind of match it up and just pull in there. A little bit of a shadowy color will be nice for this one. I'm liking that gray. Cover that up at the top. Get my top too thick, so I'm going to have to thicken that up there, guys. There. And then, if you ever needed to, you could take, I see a couple spots, take a little bit of white. And just maybe here or there, just pop a little bit white back in there. And my white is so thick. I'm going to have to thin it down. Get a little bit of liquid white. I guess that's a good problem to have, thick white. Touching a little dark back where I kind of had to mess with that thicker white there. And finish this guy up. Put a little bit up there, up there, up there. There. Grab our liner brush and some black. Thin it down with a little bit of paint thinner. We need some little arms on this guy here. Maybe this one just continues up a little bit more even. I might let them both do that actually. 
and then just have some arms and wiggle and jiggle these little branches and let them hang. Birch trees usually kind of grow up and out. Something like that. But make them your own. They can grow however you want them to grow, really. You have the power to make them your trees. Make them your trees. Like that. Always be aware that your paint, will, your thinner will start to evaporate out of that paint, so you've got to always keep adding just a touch back into it sometimes. If it starts, you'll know, especially once you paint a little bit more often, you'll know. You'll kind of know the feel, what's going on. Doesn't feel right to you, it's probably not right. A big old arm on that guy back here. Honestly, I think the arms are the only thing that I, uh, that makes me even want to paint a birch tree sometimes. They just look odd to me. Painting them so thick and so white. Yeah, it feels like arms go across and they reach back and go every which way but loose here with them. Cross that tree and back that way on that one and however many you want. Make sure that you have enough. But also be careful. I still have to do it myself. Be careful that you don't get little patterns. Like you start seeing You've got one here and I've got one there. That that looks odd to me, so be careful there. I wasn't paying attention really where I put them. But I can give you guys that tip and you can avoid it. Maybe not. Maybe there's a bigger one right here. It just kind of comes out. It goes up through there. Who knows? Now at the end, if we want to, we can take a little bit of that liquid white. Put some little highlights on these if we want. I'll knock them back down into the knock them back down to the tree a little bit too helps. Pull the limb into the center or pull it right on the side. Uh I forget Bob had a couple down here that actually just kind of growing out of the ground here. It's kind of neat. So I'll put that one in there too. That's it. Now, one thing I did that Bob did not do, which I still don't know, I, I would wipe that brush off a little bit, that script liner. But I wouldn't clean it. Um, I wouldn't clean it. I would just kind of lightly wipe it off with paper towel. And I'm thinking if the sunlight's right there, there should be something here. You can put this in with a fan brush or, or a uh, any kind of brush, but we need a little bit of a shadow. In my mind, I'm probably doing it in a messy way. There's something there. And if you've got a clean one inch or a clean two inch, probably would pull that out. Right out from the back of that tree. Just kind of like that. I think it needed. I think it needs that. Don't tell me if I'm crazy or not. I'm going to even pull a little bit right there in the front. Definitely on the back there. Because it would cast a shadow, I think. George and Sam are identical twins, probably. Yeah, I agree with that. Identical twins. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, as long as you got something there, I think it it looks odd without a shadow to me. Don't put it there if you don't if you don't think it needs it. But it needs it to me. I think we got enough there. I think we got enough there. I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure I got enough though. Pull cool, that color on down just a little bit. I don't think I pulled mine down far enough. There. There. There we go. Okay. Now you know the snow that we had, a little more. Grab my snow brush. That's it. I'm lucky I've got several brushes here to work with. And just pull a little bit of a snow island here. 
and then whew, all the way down the canvas here. And then we'll paint. Yeah, there's a little section bump, got a little section right here. We'll put a little bit of a water line in there and then just kind of pull a little bit in here. And if you needed to, you could always pick up a little something and throw in here for a shadow. I picked up a little of uh, the peachy color I had on, on the palette. We'll mess around with this when we get it to what we want it. Just gonna pull it in. Pull it in and pull it out. There you go. There you go. It's a little snow bank. Go back to our knife now. Make sure you don't have any black or gray on it. You don't want that in your water. I'm gonna move the camera down just a little bit too. You almost can't see everything I'm doing. There's not much going on here. So this is a super. Besides the birch trees, if you just let the birch trees out, man, this would be an easy thing. It's not hard even with the birch trees. Just take a little while. I want to separate that little piece of land there. Put a little water under it. If it's not separating enough for you, you may need to throw a little bit of color under it. And just kind of let the water come on out there. Something like that. It's sawing right into the canvas. Don't cut your canvas. Water hitting up on that. Let's go. I think it's okay for now. We may play around with it. Right snowman. Probably I should have had some uh land that brown out, but I don't. I'm just gonna use black for this tree too. You could throw a little bit of yeah, black's fine. It's a big old stick tree. Now, you know, you can go start up, start from the bottom, and go up, but sometimes when you're painting them, and you want them to paint them, like, really big, like this one, and this guy kind of goes all the way up. Uh, not all the way up, but right here. You can kind of just start and just kind of let the brush kind of wiggle and jiggle its way down to the land. And you can kind of push a little harder and get it a little thicker in places. Right there. You can also go back over and thicken it up because it definitely needs it. Yeah, just a big old dead stick tree. I don't know, maybe this is a uh, red bud or a, a dogwood or something. Yeah, we have some little feet down here, little footsies coming off of it like that. Okay. Get, this, get the basic shape of your tree limb in or your tree in and make sure remember it's thicker it's appropriately thick at the right spots so we need to go back and thicken it up we can yeah, I think that's okay I don't think I'll, I don't think I have a toothpick I don't want a toothpick tree okay All right, so I'm still in that, in that black and some thinner. And we need some good old branches on this guy. There's a big one that kind of comes off here and it wraps off the canvas. Or like that. I mean, we may, we may keep thickening them up here. Kind of depends on you. And maybe he has a little foot that kind of comes out. I always say he, this could be, we'll call this tree, I don't know, this tree would be Jesse. That's a good unisex name too. That one goes off the canvas, coming into the tree, like that. Oh, well, maybe there's a big old guy. We need some more paint there. Need some more paint there. There we go. If you don't have paint there, you can maybe get away with like liquid clear working for this. I I would I'm not sure that it would, but there's not a ton of paint back here that we're having to cut through really. But there's a little bit. I 
I mean, I think we need a big old arm on this one. It kind of comes up here and look a little different. It goes into our snow there, rocks that snow back a little bit. This little tree gives a little bit more dimension. Pushes the birch tree back a little bit. Pushes our snow bank back. A little bit off there. Like that. We need some up here though, don't we? Oh, I'm going to steal from the tree that I put in earlier. Knock that guy back. And you can spend all night just toying around with branches and and things on this big guy here, so I probably won't get kind of boring watching me do this. Wiggle and jiggle, wiggle and jiggle and pop. It's almost like you're sweeping there at the end, and, you, and it gives you those really nice, almost uh, disappearing branches at the end. The thing I always struggled with when I first started painting is that my branches would um, be as fat at the start as they would at the end. And that's just not how trees look usually. And so you're trying to kind of just pop that strip liner up there. Popping it up. And however many of these you want. Goodness. Remember, it's your world to take, take control of it and have fun with it. Got a little gray in mine. We're picking up the white. Actually, not bad. There, we we'll call that big old tree done. Always make sure I'm maybe a little fatter back here. Make sure it doesn't. It, I don't ever want my trees just to fall. We don't want fallen trees. Uh, maybe just take a little bit of that and I'll pull a little bit of that. Tree lamp out. Get both ways in there. There. And there'll be a little shadow on that side of them. And then just pull that that way. Make a little snow bank. That gives it a little bit of something out there. Again, I'm crazy, so don't. Sometimes, it, like when you get really close down here, sometimes I don't mind leaving like snow really thick and not blend it out as much it's like you can see it almost better that makes sense i think i did bring a fan brush back here and i yep i got a little bit on here this is probably why i meant to put some brown out but we'll use black uh, maybe a little touch of red in it too it'll go a little more to the purple side so you don't want a lot of paint here I'm gonna put the paint on there and I'll probably wipe it off. Let's wipe it off here. Don't need to tear one off of that. And then down here, I've got just a little bit of grass a couple spots. Put your brush down and just kind of push up. Yeah, the purple will be better than just the straight black. Straight black's fine. And yeah, maybe over here there's a little bit showing. Okay. Before I go too far and forget, I also take my snow brush and probably right at the bottom of those, I grab them again. Pull those out a little bit. Almost lost all that one. Let me go back and put it in, can't we? There we go. Yeah, put a little bit more right here. It's kind of pushing up at the corner.
tall grasses or something there. I think on this little piece I had a little bitty tree living. So we'll throw it back in there. I'm bad to put little stick trees and things right on the banks. I don't know if it's bad or not, but I have a tendency to do that. Something there, and you need to have a few little grasses coming off of that. Barely any paint on that brush right now. Just kind of almost circles with that. And that'll get you grass going about the same direction, usually. And, oh, don't want any back there, do we? You can even put a little bit over there if you really wanted to, but I think that's probably good for that guy. What do you think? Cheryl, did you paint this one with me before? I'm sorry, I've not been watching the comments enough. You painted this one, didn't you? I think over in Sevierville. Maybe you didn't. What do we think? Um, let's do crimson for the signature instead of bright red. Let's do crimson. I'm just going to sign right here because there's space. you all do the bunnies and things I like to I, I love little bunnies I love little squirrels and little critters and things but I like to think that they're back there somewhere they're hiding from us if I come tromping through the woods there they'd be scared of me one thing I was gonna do is take a little liquid white on my script liner here and here and there Put a little bit of uh, highlight right on top of my branches I made. This is easier actually if you want to know the truth to let this dry a little bit and tack up. And then go back and do this. But I'm not going to make y'all come back and watch that. So we'll just do it here and be brave. First thing we can do is mess it up. Start back over. There's a little white up there even on that guy. There we go. Don't need much. Don't need to do much here at all. Uh, you don't have to get it everywhere. Some of them you wouldn't see. There. Just a little bit. into the tree right there. And if you mess it up, guess what? Just cover it up with something. Oh, they need just liquid white for that work. So there it is, guys. Oh, no, wait. Oh, goodness. We, we almost forgot the most important part of this painting. Goodness. I'll clean my fan brush out. I had that black in it. Oh, my goodness. This is what really makes this painting actually, I think, really nice at the end. Before I go, I see a little spot here before I go and do this. We've got to put snow on the thing. A little spot I don't like right here. There. There. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'll clean that out. I'm get new paper towel. Dry a little bit of that thinner out. Yeah. Okay. But leave a little bit. We'll grab me some titanium white. Now, since I got liquid white out of here, I might grab a little bit of that too. You don't have to. 
that to happen, I'm going to thin it down. You know how we've been doing stars? And we worry that the stars are kind of circles or, you know, we don't want big stringy stars and things. With the snow, you don't have to worry as much. If you get a huge piece of snow, that piece of snow is just closer to you, so it doesn't bother me as much. This is a little more free than the stars. I'm going to thin it down quite a bit. Again, it's one of those steps I just can't tell you. You may want to practice on something if you're trying to do it. But with snow, you really can't mess it up too much. Get a little bit on my brush. Find my knife. Which I want to get back here. Let's see, now there it is. And I'm going to just pop some snow on here. And I need more thinner. Like I'm saying it's hard for me to tell you exactly how much. I never know how much. That's that. Oh yeah. Oh, you might start seeing them now. Big old snow here. And I'm not worried that they're getting huge sometimes on this path. Probably get it on my nice green painting back there. But they're all over the canvas. Now you wouldn't just stop at the trees, right? Because just think of this as snowfall. It would get in the water. It would be everywhere if we're looking at this scene. So it's all over. It's however much you want. Really what you want. And one thing I noticed when I started doing this quite a bit of uh, this painting is the more snow you put, the further everything gets pushed back. It's amazing, really, uh, This what this step does for the painting. It's almost like Bob knew what he was doing sometimes, right? And you put as much as you want. Just keep going. I mean, it's like a blizzard or you just want like a little flurry. Whatever. So we'll stop there for now. And I can get crazy with it. And I can go crazy with it. But it's just snowfall magic and it's just the snow is falling everywhere on that thing. And again, don't worry. Most of mine are actually okay shapes, but if you get one that looks weird, it's snow. Even uh, don't they say that snowfall is uh there's snowflakes, there's no two snowflakes alike. Well, there you go. That's your excuse. There it is, guys. There's the finished painting. And again, that's Bob. That I'm taking credit for. It's not my original design. It's season 19, episode 1, somebody said. That's probably right. Try it out. It's an easy one. Mess around with it. Change some things with it. Play with it and have fun with it. Um, but have fun. That's the biggest thing. I don't know when I'm going to do this again. But I'll, I'll post something, and uh, we'll see if we can come up with something a little warmer next time. Maybe a, a seascape or a lake scene or something like that for next time. But all right, guys. Everybody take care and stay safe and uh, take care of each other and, and, and be kind to each other. More than anything, be kind. All right. See you guys down the road.